प्रभु नमस्कार ए वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ कैनडा इंडिया फाउंडेशन एंड ऑल द पार्टनर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू अवर थर्ड सेशन ऑन सीजन टू आयुर्वेदिक स्पीकर सीरीज the pharma pharmacological and therapeutic effect of uh, uh, top 75 uh, traditional ayurvedic uh, medicines uh, friends the objective of uh, our this speaker series is not only to invoke the discussion among the medical fraternity but also to educate impart knowledge uh, to our civil society uh, to a common man that uh, as we all know ayurveda is a science of life it's a knowledge of life it's a way of life that how a, a common man also can uh, get a knowledge and uh, uh, from from our accomplished uh, speakers and eminent personalities uh, in the field uh, who are gathered here to impart their knowledge uh, as we all know that uh, today's era post covid era we all are more vigilant about our uh, holistic health we all care about deeply deeply that how fragile a human health is and in this uh, uh, small effort of canada india foundation along with all the uh, joining uh, partnering organization uh, it's a small uh, effort uh, in this regard and uh, i welcome all the speakers who are Uh, with us uh, in this series and uh, uh, we are looking forward to this very exciting uh, session today uh, please do write to us for any suggestion you might have any comments you would like to give us because we are all in the journey of improving ourselves and uh, uh, providing the best of the best uh, knowledge available uh, to you all and uh, your feedback is very very critical please do write to us and with that small note i welcome you all and i invite dr harish verma to please introduce the uh, topic of today and carry on the discussions dr verma over to you thank you cg thank you very much viewers today we will discuss a very important polyherbal traditional ayurvedic medicine called amrita rest amrita rest is prepared from a very famous herb called guduchi or a giloe it is also known as amrita and the botanical name is tinospora cordifolia during current pandemic guduchi or a tinospora cordifolia was found very effective against covid 19 and it was promoted by ministry of ayush in india as well as ayurveda acharyas all over the world for treatment of covid 19 there was some controversy about this herb a group of hepatologists from liver research club india published an article which is available on pubmed this group of hepatologists observed that tinospora cordifolia or a guduchi caused a liver injury in those patients who had autoimmune hepatitis ayush ministry has given clarification in this matter and have caution public about use of tinospora crispa which looks similar to tinospora cordifolia now this is a billion dollar question can tinospora cordifolia cause liver injury in cases of autoimmune hepatitis we will listen from our experts about amrita rest today we have dr vinay sen from bhu dr shailesh desh pande from parul university and ayurveda guru dr pratibha shah from boston we will start this session now i i invite dr madan thanga vaidu ji to moderate this session and over to dr madan thangavali ji thank you satish ji namaskar harish ji namaskar pratibha ji namaskar thank you for joining us today uh, and thanks to both our speakers um, dr sen joining us from varanasi and uh, dr sailesh joining us from gujarat from ahmedabad thank you so much for joining us the 
part of our the third session that we are talking about is about one of the two groups of alcoholic naturally fermented formulations that are part of the traditional Ayurvedic medicine formulary. Our previous, uh, in our previous session, we talked about asavams, and today we talk about um, arishtams. Arishtams are produced by taking water extracts, generally a decoction of a collection of herbs, and then sweetened with raw sugar, jaggery in this instance, and then the fermentation process is started. In this instance, the traditional method is to use a certain uh, flower, which brings along with it certain microbes, the formulation, the fermentation process started and let to go on for a period known to the uh, producers of this formulation. Now, when these formulations are prepared in a traditional way, they are safe to use. They produce therapeutic effects. The practitioners will tell you that they can even be used in infants in certain ways. So the controversy that Harishji mentioned is a very important one. How come we have a herb, Tinospora cordifolia guruchi, used for thousands of years in traditional preparations? How come this is leading to problems? Now, when you look at the standard formulation, the formulation that is generally accepted comes from an 18th century textbook or compilation by an 18th century uh, physician. And the name of the textbook is by Shaji Ratnavali. And this formulation is found in the Jwara Chikitsa Adhyaya, that is the section related to treatment of fevers. It has uh, the predominant uh, uh, herb in there, Tinospora cordifolia, and generally about a tenth the amount of 10 other herbs, which are part of the dashamula, the 10 roots or certain uh, parts of plants that are used. Um, and they are combined together, boiled in, in 10 times the amount of water. So if you use a kilogram of the herb, then you use uh, 10 kilograms of water and then you boil it and you reduce it down, et cetera. You filter it and then you start the fermentation process by having added a sweetener in there. We look forward to hearing from our two experts today. The way our, uh, uh, the sessions are held, we have a person who comes from the area of Ayurvedic pharmaceutics, um, Dravya Guna, and we have a person who comes from the therapeutic aspect, the Kaya Chikitsa aspect. We are very fortunate to have here with us today, Dr. Pratibha Shah, who is joining us from Boston in, in America. Pratibha Shah is uh, one of our senior colleagues. Um, she studied Ayurveda in India, did an MD in uh, Jamnagar, if I understand correctly, and specialized in this area of uh, uh, Ayurveda formulations, and, and particularly the use of basmas, which are metal oxides, approximately translated. Now, Pratibhaji, I have a, before we bring our two specialists in today, I have a question for you, which is a question that is on the mind of many users, and in India, outside India, even more confusing for the modern medicine practitioner, which is why do you have to use so many different herbs in a preparation? What is this thing about polyherbal preparations? Maybe you can tell us a little bit before we hear from our um, panelists today. Thank you. Sure. Uh, I think very briefly, uh, because we want to hear the invited experts, then I know I will be talking about Prakshepitravyas later on. Um, so polyherbal formulations are a uh, uh, signature uh, of Ayurvedic preparations because the objective uh, objectives of Bhaisajya Kalpana in Ayurveda are to increase the synergistic effect of the formulation, bring in multiple therapeutic benefits of the individual component herbs, and create a synergistic effect, which is the sum total of the individual therapeutic effects is bigger than the individual effects of the herbs if given singly. 
And also, more importantly, not just the synergistic effect, but also the uh, polyherbal approach also helps in neutralizing or uh, minimizing or mitigating some of the antagonistic effects of the individual ingredients. And then there are other uh, benefits of polyherbals and which are not random, which are very well thought out. Uh, and, and a lot of uh, um, information about the individual herbs, their, their uh, uh, rasa, guna, virya, vipaka goes into the uh, consideration of these polyherbals. Uh, also, uh, the polyherbal approach makes it more um, palatable sometimes because sometimes some of the individual herbs may not be palatable on their own and um, sometimes safer because, for example, Bhallataka uh, there is uh, the, the entire Shodhana process involved. It's a very um, um, sharp, caustic uh, and, and very, very strong uh, um, fruit that we use in the preparation. So that uh, we have to be very, very careful about, uh, you know, shodha, shodhana and, and combining it with herbs that make it safer. So the end, you know, the antioxidant uh, effect of the total, sum total of the formulation, the uh, longer shelf life sometimes because of the ingredients, um, the the precise dosha dosha samurchana that is being targeted. Um, you know, sometimes the ingredients are doing, uh, some of them are doing the deepana pachana for making the rest of the ingredients more bioavailable and more uh, absorbable, more uh, assimilation of the total formulation. So multiple uh, reasons why in Ayurveda we see uh, less use of ekal dravyas, which actually has become a little more popular in the West because the polyherbals are not either allowed or legally permissible. Um, but uh, the uh, classical Ayurvedic approach is the polyherbal approach. Ekal dravya use is much, much less than what we see in the West, in the classic Ayurveda, it is the polyherbal approach. And then of course we have all the kalpanas, the panchavida, kashaya kalpanas, etc. But that's a short Thank answer. you. Thank you, Prithivaji. For people who are not familiar with the Ayurvedic terminology, we've heard several phrases and words being used about dosha, shamana, and all these things. Now, these are all technical terms that are as sophisticated as any of the terms that we use in modern biology, in, in any of those areas of modern biology. And only with a very deep study of these principles and their connections with the different theoretical foundations, the Panjabhut Siddhanta, the Tridosh Siddhanta, and how you combine, how you use uh, combinations of herbs, do you understand the nature of action of these powerful, yet simple formulations called and grouped under what we are calling the traditional Ayurvedic medicines. We are very fortunate to have here with us today two experts from this area. We have Binay Sen, our first presenter. Binay is, uh, he has spent many years studying Ayurveda, so he would have done a BAMS of six years, an MD three years, and perhaps another four or five years of a PhD in Ayurveda and currently assistant professor in Dravya Guna, this is understanding the properties of uh, medicinal plants and medicinal ingredients. Uh, our second speaker, Dr. Shailesh Deshpande, also is a BAMS graduate, Bachelor in Ayurvedic Medicine and Sci uh, Surgery and an MD, and he is professor of Kaya Chikits, so the treatment modalities and how they, how you use formulations. And he is at Parul University in Gujarat. I'm delighted to welcome our first speaker, Dr. Binay Sen. Binayji, Namaskar. Thank you so much for joining us from Kashi, the precious land of Varanasi, and the wonderful University of Benares, Benares Hindu University. Uh, Thank you, sir. Known Thank around you. India, known around the world for your scholarship and academic excellence. Thank you so much for finding time to be here with us today. The floor is yours, sir. We would like to hear a little bit, maybe very briefly, how you came into the world of Ayurveda, because some of our young listeners might want to follow 
the kind of path that you have taken, dedicated study for over 15, 16 years, training to be an Ayurveda specialist, to become a teacher of Ayurveda. We would love to hear a little bit, and then the floor is yours for your presentation. Thank you, sir. Uh, shall I uh, share my screen, sir, first? Yes, you can share your screen. And while you're doing that, please also tell us a little bit okay, about yourself. Okay, sir, actually, uh, I have uh, done my UG from Gauhati Ayurvedic College. It's uh, situated in Assam. Uh, after that, I have completed my MD from Banaras Hindu University. Uh, also a PhD from Banaras Hindu University. So after completing my academic degree, I have joined in State Ayurvedic College of Government of UP. Then I have been selected under the Ministry of Ayush at the National Institute at Shillong, Meghalaya. And then after, I am lucky enough, fortunate enough to be an integral part of my mother institute, my dreamland, my dream project. Uh, since uh, I am working there uh, since 2019 in the capacity of assistant professor. Thank you, sir. So Thank you so much for this. Brief introduction. Now I am going to share this uh, presentation. Uh, before the starting this, I must say namaste and good evening from India to all the panelists, participants, research scholars, and all the public who are the part of this program. It is really a proud moment for me as when India is observing the Ajadika Amrit Mahotsav. I am presenting, representing my nation India with one of the most important uh, preparations that is Amrita Rishta. The name itself indicates Amrita as well as the one of the most important ingredients is Amrita. It is not merely a coincidence, but I must say that it is a increasing interest to and global acceptance of Ayurveda. As it is evident one of, by one of the facts that the different organizations of uh, Europe as well as America are gathered here to uh, in a series of lecture that is the top 75 traditional Ayurvedic medicine and one of these is a Amrita Rishta. Most of the aspects of this talk already been covered by the panelists and I am just talking of what about the issues you have been arised but yes I will con uh, definitely to say something that the uh, PPT will be there with these organizers and perhaps it will be shared to all the audience, uh, participants. So I will be skipping, those are not so much important, but I will be highlighting that how Amrita and Amrita Rist is different. And why the already this uh, question raised on this uh, hepatotoxic uh, toxicity of this Tinospora cordifolia and polyhar what is the actually importance of polyharbor uh, formulations. To some of this extent, I will cover this lecture because this, this lecture is needs a very at least one hour time, but I have to complete within a 15 minutes duration. So I'll try my level best to share some of the, my experience and knowledge what I have learned throughout this uh, my career. So today, I am talking of this Amrita Rishta, a pharmacological output. So that next slides will be covering the contents, classical context, ingredients, Ayurvedic pharmacodynamics of Amrita Rishta ingredients, important phytoconstituents, pharmaceutical preparations of Amrita Rishta, action of Amrita Rishta, pharmacological activities of different ingredients of Amrita Rishta, as well as evidence-based pharmacological studies on Amrita Rishta as a drug. Then, rationality behind the drug combination, scientific background of drug formulation and pharmacokinetics in Ayurveda, evidences on pharmacokinetic extension of drug combination, discussion, conclusion, followed by references. So, I have already this has been quoted by our Madan sir that uh, this is a classical uh, drug which has been uh, appeared in Vaishya Ratnavali in the 18th century. AD. So, the ingredients are 
the major uh, the uh, major ingredients is amrita as well as dasimul both drugs are equally taken in this formulation and the rest drugs which are used as prakshep drabya that is the added drugs and along with to uh, accelerate uh, or initiate the fermentation here jagadi is used the flower of dhatuki is not being used in this formulation so these are the part used as well as quantity as per the classical reference now i will just uh, say that what is actually the pharmacodynamics of the property because this pharmacodynamics properties of the drug actually give some explanation of the pharmacotherapeutic effect so if you see that is the ingredients of the drugs so most of the drugs are having pictures uh, katu vipak as well as ushna bhivya bhivya means potency vipak means post metabolism and ras that is the taste so this every uh, properties like rasa vipak bhivya has guna has are having their own pharmaco uh, uh, pharmacokinetic properties that been mentioned in ayurved so we are just uh, coming to this uh, important phyto constituents what are actually uh, taking care of this uh, uh, in this formulation you see there is the tinospora cordifolia having different kinds of phyto constituents like alkaloids esterides lactones glycosides terpenoids dasumul there is the in, uh, of ten uh, drugs these are tenin esteride alkaloids glycoside flavones flavonoids in trico to these are alkaloid ester esteroids flavonoids saponins tenins so that is a brief of how this is prepared so i will just skip this slide and go to the next slides of the diagnostic presentation of this preparation so here we are taking the amrita that is the tinospora cordifolia and dasumul and making them a coarse powder and keep keep in soak in a water of four times of this total ingredients means including the other proxy drabi also so then we boil till reduced to one fourth and this decoction is made into filtration with the muslin cloths and after that we use the jaggery as well as the other proxy drabs like trico2 etc and keep this containers in a sealed condition and to accelerate this fermentation process it is better to keep in the heap of pedi and average temperature to be maintains 35 to 37 degrees centigrade and the average duration for the ferment fermentation is a 35 days period so after when it is there a different taste for uh, see of uh, examine whether this fermentation procedure has been completed or not so if it is completed then we have to decan this uh, the uh, liquid portion then again we keep it for another 2 to 3 days for to settle down this uh, suspended partic particles and after that again we filter this liquid portion and keep it in a bot bottle jar or any other basket container so now what is actually the scientific explanation of this uh, uh, this uh, preparation amrita rest so how this active constituents are coming into this amrita rest so there is actually two Uh, process process which is one it is a aqueous extraction and another one is alcoholic extraction so aqueous extraction which is made through the decoction and this concept is uh, very uh, rightly explained in ayurved gatva gata rasam etanna ushadanna tam rasam and ras shabda virivacha actually whenever we are talking of ras ras has a multiple explanations like it is a potency of the drug so here the gataras means that is the transformation of the active principle or the drug potency into the solvent so that Vinay is ji, I, but, i i apologies to disturb you our audience would like you to convert the presentation so that it comes to presentation mode uh, so that they can see read things clearly my apologies for Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, there we are. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. So here, when we are uh, taking this aqueous extraction or what is called decoction in what uh, in Ayurved, so here we are transforming the drug potency into the liquid process with it. So there are different pharmaceutical preparations by using liquid, whether it's a water or it's a fat like. Tail or glitter, etc. So these are the way we are extracting out the active principle into the solvent. And another is 
in case of amrita rish this is a alcoholic extraction that is also called ayurveda in sandan or arist kalpana so here what happened certain drugs are uh, dissolved in uh, dissolving in the alcohol media so they are easily extracted out to the solvents so this alcohol so generated also serve as preservative food. so what happened actually if you see this what is the scientific explanation in what are generally starches tannins saponin terpenoids polypeptides uh, tannins lactones polyphenols terpenoids flavonoids alkaloids are extracted but when we are using hydroalcoholic extracts then we have a advantage over the single extraction process means those extractives or active principles dissolve in water and those dissolve in alcohol both active constituents are easily extractable so that is the advantage in a arist preparation so action of amrita arist if you see that this is actually tridoshagna that is which specifies all the three doses, namely vata, pitta, and kapha, is a deepen, stimulant, spachan, that is digestive. Jara, kulantak means cures all types of fever and effective in different disease condition like kamala, that is jaundice, pandu, anemia, may, diabetes. Uh, then medorok, that is obesity or dyslipidemia, vata rakta, like gout, pushed skin diseases, etc. So these are some of the individual drug pharmacological activities mentioned, but overall if we see, it is very clear that most of the drugs having hepatoprotective, antioxidant, antimicrobial, antibacterial, hyperlipidemic, and some drugs are even insecticidal activity. Some drugs are potentiator of some modern medicine like ciprofloxacin. Uh, some drugs are anti-cancerous, some drugs are bioavailability and answer. Some are immunomodulator. So these are a wide spectrum of pharmacological activities of this drug. Now, coming to this Amrita register, there are some studies have been carried out on this pharmacological property. So this uh, uh, Amrita Rist is prepared both ways. That is a traditional, another in, in modern method. Modern method, what traditional tennis means, whatever described in Ayurveda. And in the modern, in spite of uh, using this jaggery, the yeast has been added. So that is only the difference. And this study observed that both the preparations were found effective in, uh, in uh, inhibiting the some common pathogens of human being like Staphylococcus aureus, Bacillus subtilis, Salmonella typhi, E. coli, Pseudomonas originosa. Uh, and another study also observed this, this preparation is having anti-hyperlipidemic property. So now coming to this, what is the rationality behind this drug, drug combination which is described in Ayurveda? So it is very scientifically explained that when there is a uh, combination of the drugs, then the pharmacokinetic is changed because of different uh, operating pharmacodynamic properties. And this follows five principles. These are shangyog, that is the combination of different drugs, whether it may be herbal or herbomineral, or and then bislis, that is the subtraction, that is where means we are subtracting a drug from a group. Like there are so many groups described in Ayurveda, like Jivaniya Mahakasai, like Vidari, Vidari Gandadi Gana. So it is not like all the 10 drugs or all, whatever the drug mentioned in this group we have to use. We have to subtract according to our need. Then call dose time. And also this is also the duration. Sanskar, that is the different kinds of processing, like a, this is a preparation or like Sudhan, etc. There are so many uh, Sanskars are there. And finally, which is important is the yukti, that is the rationality in administration. So this is referred in Ayurveda with this classical sloka as alpashya bhi maharatam prabhutashyal prapandam kuriyat shangyat bishlesha kala shanskara yukti bhi. So this combination, how these are actually happens in the uh, polyherbal or polyherbomineral uh, formulations. So as already Madam uh, Dr. Purtiva has explained very nicely. So I am adding some of the points here. That is, when there is a drug combination, the drug 
exert synergistic or additive effect. So this is an example of the recall to work solution. Inhibitory effect or sometimes it prevent adverse drug reaction. For example, people in Bardhaman. Shara Gutika, Bhallatak, Chitragadi Gati. Why these examples you see? In Chadak Viman, it is said that people in Shara should not be used for the lung application. But in case of Rasayan, people in Bardhaman is used for lung duration. Shara Gutika, it is a good anti-poisonous uh, drug. So it is used for a longer duration. Bhallatak, for example, in the form of Amrit Bhallatak, it is given. Chitragadevati, also there are certain shar, uh, means alkaline drugs are there. Anti-poisonous effects. So mostly we have seen that when there is a uh, polyherbal formulations, when there is a version up, we see that tangan is also subsequently used because tangan is the unique uh, antidote of version up. Bio-enhancing effects. So mostly people in Madhu, Trico2 are the few examples, those drugs act as uh, bio-enhancing or increase the bioavailability of the drugs. Sometimes it's an anti-incompatibility effect. As we know in the incompatibility, lesson that is garlic and sheer milk is contraindicated. But in the treatment of bulma, abdominal enlargement, it is being prescribed. Target a specific drug delivery. There are many differences of anupan or sarapan, that is the adjuvants or vehicle, being used with a drug for different pharmacotherapeutic effects. Sometimes this combination also acts as a natural preservative. So there are so many advantages of the uh, drug formulations or uh, polyherbal formulations over the single drug therapy. Now, what is the scientific background of the drug, drug formulation? As this is a reference of the classics of Ayurveda that is been described that when there is a combination of the drug, we always observe the variations in the degree of vitiation of the dosha as well as uh, dusya, that is the uh, morbid tissues. So in that cases, there are two principles described in Ayurveda, that is Prakriti Sama Samavai and Vikriti Sama Samavai. That Prakriti Sama Samavai means when the properties of the rasa acts accordingly to subside the dosha or the disease. But what is Vikriti Visam Samavai? That is, this non, uh, the general principles are not being followed. Means in that combination, some drugs, in a, when we are considering the pharmacodynamic like rasa, viria, vipaka, etc., the effect is something different. So there are so many factors operating for this uh, 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 combinations and another beautiful examination has been given that is a single drug carries diverse pharmacological properties by its specific processing. So there are so many examples of the drug like uh, you see that is mentioned in Saritaki. Okay. That means when we are using with salt that subsides tapa. And when we are giving it sugar, that subsides pitta. So single drug. So in case of Tinospora guruji, guruji, that is Tinospora quadrupolia. Chakra Tata has given a very nice explanation on guruji. Okay. So there are certain examples. So many examples are there. This combination is the appropriate conjugation of the drugs. When, because it is not likely that, that we are taking seldom or a drugs what are available and we are making the combination. It is not like that. It is a appropriate combination of the drug. And this combination also leads to a some specific action and which is inexplicable that cannot be explained on the basis of Rasa, et cetera. So that's already I have explained this, that is uh, use of milk and garlic, though it is con contradictory, but it is used in abdominal enlargement due to its uh, peculiarity that has been explained Ayurveda as poha. It's something different that is, you may say that is due to the uh, 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 specific phytoconstituents present in the drug. And this combination of this drug, or even when we are talking of individual drug, like this uh, recently, this new, uh, this uh, uh, scientific, uh, um, in uh, papers are published on this uh, toxic effect of the Guruji. So I must say there is 
the adverse drug reaction are well explained in Ayurveda. It is not like that, that every Ayurvedic drug is safe. But what is important? that these five factors I have already mentioned, Shangyog, Bishle, Shanskar, Kal, and Yukti. So that to be always considered. So that is why there is a good example has been quoted in Ayurveda. That is that even we know Bish, that is the poison, is a toxic substance. But if we administer it rationally, it acts as nectar. Visham Pranahara Muktam Tattu Yuktu Yuktam Rasayanam. So that is the classical reference. And even it is seen that in uh, treatment of udar, that is the uh, abdominal disorders, which is uh, being used. So there are certain examples are also there. Even we know the amlaki, it's a tridosha, it's a rasayan. But yes, if we use long time or and in excessive quantity, the amlaki also called agni manja, uh, caused agni manja. It means diminish the digestive fire. So it is not like that every drug is safe. So there are different factors which are operating in drugs effect. So one, in this context, I will explain, uh, I would uh, refer here two examples. That is a recent study showed Ayurveda formulation the Dasmula decoction and Tricotu powder along with other drugs used as an add-on therapy to conventional care, that is the modern medicine. And we have seen that there is a reduction in the phase, in the symptomatic phase in the patient of COVID-19 as compared to a stand alone conventional care. So that is the what I want to explain that this Ayurvedic drug has a role in as a add-on therapy in different challenging conditions. Apart from it is a not undoubtedly a mainstream therapy, but there is certain provision where we can use with the combination of the modern drug. Binaji. Another study which revealed that there is a decrease in plasma consumption of perfluxacin following clinical to administration, to administration in goats. So that is what that these clinical to that's a combination of Pippali Manish Shunti, Piper Langam, Piper Nigram, and Gingiver Officinal are acting as bio enhancer. Means it increases the bioavailability, the absorption of the drug. So that is why there is a decreased plasma concentration after administration of this drug along with uh, Pippaloxacin. Binajit, uh, okay, here we are towards the end. Of, thank you so much as we so, come to this. So now, what I uh, communicate with these presentations that when there is a uh, polyherbal or herbominal uh, preparation, so these are certain things we consider. So Amrita Rist is a preparation of hydroalcoholic extract and majority of the drugs of this Amrita Rist is having Tictarus. And Tictarus is responsible for dependent pattern, stimulant and digestive. It's a Kotu Pipak. Again, it's a having a digestive and stimulant effect. Ushnaviria, and it is a Vat Samak analgesic and Timbalis like that. The nature of phytoconstituents reveal that they are well extracted in hydroalcoholic media. So all the ingredients are having antioxidant, immunomodulatory, anti-diabetic, anti-hyperlipidemic, abatoprotective, antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, anti-cancerous, and there are so many multi-dimensional uh, activities of these uh, ingredients of these amitaris. And even amitaris individually has found antibacterial and anti hyper lipidemic activities. So drug combination has multifaceted pharmacodynamics as well as pharmacokinetics. This combination is a holistic approach to use whole food drug, which is mixture of many constituents, some of which are pharmacologically active, some are nutrients, some are antidotes, some are bioenhancer, some has some have synergistic action, some help in assimilation of the main drug, while some are added for additional therapeutic effect needed for the indication of the proposed compound. So that is actually the message of these presentations. And finally, whenever we are talking about the drug toxicity of the Guruchi or Tinospora cordifolia or Tinospora tispa or another species of Tinospora, I must say the single drug which may cause side effect or any adverse drug reaction may be safe in compound formulation. So these are the references I have gone through. 
and mentioned here. Uh, with this, I would like to extend my thank to all these organizers and uh, panelists for giving me this opportunity to share some of my points. So this is a beautiful Banaras University. Uh, I must again congratulate the organizer for arranging such kind of a good interactive session. And thank you very much for your patience here. Thank you, Binay. Thank you, Binayji. Thank you very much. You've taken us in, into some of the depths of variations in how this preparation is made. You've taken us into depths of what is in the scientific parlance of Ayurveda. Deep terms like Prakriti Samaya, Samavaya, Samaya. Prakriti Samavaya. Yes. These are very technical terms which we can discuss for many, many days together. Yes. So yes. I'll, I'll leave it there. You are with us for the discussion section and we will carry on. We will move to our next speaker. Thank you very much for presenting. We will have many, many questions as we come into our discussion section. I invite our second speaker, Namaskar Ji. Shailesh Ji, Namaskar. Namaskar. The floor is yours. Um, if you could tell us very briefly, very briefly, how you came into this very exciting area of Kai Chikitsa in Ayurveda. And uh, uh, without taking up too much time, but we would love to hear from you. Thank you. The floor is yours. Yeah. Uh, so actually, there was no tradition of uh, any medical, any person going to uh, doctory or any, any, anyone from my family was, did not have any medical background. I am the first one from my family to become a doctor. And the reason why I chose Ayurveda because when my younger brother, when some of my family members were used to get ill because of any type of disease, uh, in, in, when I was a child, then uh, we used to go to an Ayurvedic doctor. And that was that, that's where I had my first interaction with Ayurveda as a patient or as a relative of a patient. And I used to take interest in that. And Which part of the country was this? Yeah, I, I was residing at a time in Pune and mm. Pune is having a great tradition of uh, Ayurvedic, good Ayurvedic practitioners and good Ayurvedic culture is still present in Pune. So I was fortunate enough to get an admission in a college in, uh, for studying my undergraduate in Pune. And after completion, my under, uh, completing my undergraduation, I took admission for uh, MD in Kai Chikit Sain, one of the best government colleges in India, that is Arya Pudar Medical College. And I would like to say that this is the only college in India that has a casualty. So we used to have patients who were in emergency. We had a chance to treat patients who were in emergency while doing post-graduation. So that actually attracted me towards Ayurvedic practice much more and gave us a lot of experience of treating such cases, uh, at least trying to uh, treat such cases who were in emergency by using Ayurvedic medicines or Ayurvedic therapeutics. Then I joined at uh, one of the Ayurvedic colleges and I started my career there as a teacher of Ayurveda in the position of lecturer and currently I'm working in the Parul University as professor and I'm also handling the research wing of Parul University uh, Ayurveda faculty. So uh, this is about my journey uh, in you. Ayurveda. It is exciting for those, and uh, 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 gives me for, a lot of pleasure. For those who are uh, here listening to us, I just uh, want to say Shailesh Ji briefly mentioned Are Podar Medical College, Are Podar is an old institution established about 1941 in Mumbai, in the city of Mumbai. Mumbai, the city of Mumbai has a population touching about 25 million people, which is about two thirds the size of population of Canada. So the floor is yours, uh, Shailesh Ji. Thank you. Yeah, uh, at the outset, I would like to thank the organizers, Dr. Harish Ji, Dr. Madan Ji, and all the stakeholders in the whatever uh, in organizing this uh, beautiful webinar series that is actually going to help propagate Ayurveda and Ayurvedic medicines to the whole of the world. So today's topic 
uh, that is uh, that, that I am alluded is about Amruta Rishtam. And my previous speaker, Dr. Binay sir, has already explained about the pharmaceutical aspect of the same. Now, I being a person from Kai Chikitsa, that is Ayurvedic medicine, who is engaged in treating the patients, I would like to throw some light about Amruta Rishtam uh, from a therapeutic point of view. As rightly pointed out by my previous speaker, that there are a lot of pharmaceutical preparations or forms of medicine that we can use in practice. But this particular Amruta Arishta, that is an Arishta Kalpana, which is a Sandhan Kalpana, uh, precisely it contains alcoholic as well as water extracts of the medicines which are being used to prepare this Asava Arishta or Sandhan Kalpana that we, that we call it in Ayurveda. Now, when we prefer this type of uh, Sandhana Kalpana or Asava Rishta in practice, uh, whenever I need that my patient should get quick relief, whenever I need that my, that my medicine should be more palatable, then these type of formulations are uh, basically used to get quick relief and also to make the medicines palatable because we know that guduchi or amruta is very bitter and nobody will consume it powder or its concoction very easily. So that's where this amruta rishtam comes into play. These are the ingredients uh, as rightly pointed out by the previous speaker. This reference is from Baishajar Ratnavali. Now I would like to throw light on how to collect the medicines. Ayurveda has precisely quoted about when to collect the medicines at in which season, which part of the plant should be collected. And for Guruji, it is explained that it should be collected in summer. And the stem size while collecting should be more than one centimeter. It has been told that it should be more thick than our, uh, our thumb or, or our little finger is. And specifically, if it, it is growing on neem, it will show better results. And such type of collected guduchi should be dried, powder, pounded, and in whatever form we want to use, we can use that. So this is the Ayurvedic thought of collecting the raw material, that is guduchi. Now, as rightly pointed out by the previous speaker, that if we, uh, if, if we consider the effectiveness of this particular medicine, it has been explained that Sarva Jvarakulan Takaha, it means it cures, it helps, or it treats all the types of fever, that is febrile illnesses. And what Ayurveda says about febrile illnesses, let us see. Ayurveda says the pathology behind any type of fever is the dislodgement or the displacement of Agni from its place, its natural place that is Grahani or small intestines. And then this displaced Agni, when it travels to all the parts of the body, following the path of the Rasadhatu, there is fever. It, it is applicable in any type of fever. And it has also been told that a person who is able to treat cases of fever can treat any of the diseases. So fever is a versatile disease or Jwara is a versatile disease. It can, uh, it, it can happen through multiple ways. And these are the types. One is acute fever, we call it as a Navajwara. Chronic fever, we call it as a Jiranajwara. Intermittent fever, we call it as Vishamajwara. Fever due to all doshas, we call it as a Sannipatajwara. And relapse of fever, we call it as a Punaravartijwara. And these five types have different pathological processes happening in the body to cause these types of fever. Like in acute fever, there is excessive collection of doshaja armor that is actually hijacking this digestive fire from its place and taking it to all over the body. In chronic fever, the, the pathological process changes and it is the weak dhatus and aggravated vata that carries this digestive fire out of uh, its normal place. In intermittent fever, the aggravated doshas and uh, when they get lost themselves into the body constituent that is body tissues or dhatus, then it causes the intermittent fever that has a clinical presentation of having fever episodes at a specific particular, in a, speci in a specific pattern. Sannipata is a totally different situation where the aggravation of doshas is very, very extensive and that has caused affected or that has affected the dhatus extensively 
and this is some it, it is a sort of what we can say an emergency type of situation and the pre presentation of patient keeps on changing and ideally those patients need a very close monitoring when they are being treated and the last is the relapsed fever where the causative factor for having this type of fever is again aggravated doshas in combination with the weak dhatus and when we say amruta rishtam now these are diverse situations not connected with each other which are happening in the body and let us see how amruta rishtam can be helpful in management of such diversely happening pathologies in different types of fever so in acute fever the amruta rishtam will help in the digestion or metabolism of the doshas as langana is main line of treatment given in acute or fever or navajwara it will increase the digestion of doshas and due to its lagu and tikta property in cases of chronic fever what we need to do is we need to pacify vata and we need to increase the strength of the dhatus and guduchi being snigdha and rasayana it will help in increasing the strength of the dhatus as well as it will help in uh, controlling the vata activity in the body and thereby it may help in in uh, in giving relief from the jirana jwara in cases of vishama jwara what we need to do is we need some medicine that will have these both effects it mean it should metabolize the doshas it should take out the doshas from the body as well as simultaneously it should strengthen the dhatus so in such case uh, amruta rishtam will help due to its tiktaras and katu vipaka yet it is snigdha so it will be capable of doing both these activities together and that's why it will be useful in the cases of vishamajwara as well in cases of sannipata jwara sannipata is a situation where doshas not only vitiate the body they vitiate each other and they form such a combination in the body that becomes very very what we can say uh, very very uh infective and and the person uh, suffers from severe complaints and in such situation what we need as a medicine that can act on all the doshas simultaneously and that can also strengthen the dhatus the guduchi it has been told that guduchi is tridosha amaya hara that means it will act on all the three doshas it has a capacity to act on all the three doshas simultaneously and due to its snigdha and rasayana guna it will also help in strengthening the dhatus due to its uh, tikta ras and ushna virya it will also help in maintaining the digestive fire that actually is responsible for conducting all the metabolic activities in the body that's why it can help in severe condition as sannipata jwara also and in cases of relapse of fever that is punaravarti jwara we again need something that is lagu as well as balya that means it can promote st uh, strength of the dhatus and it is like the also and it also helps by improving the digestive fire and guduchi we all know that it is a very good uh, rasayana medicine so what we can see that guduchi is helpful in treating diverse pathologies which are uh, seen in cases of different types of jwara that's why amruta rishtam what we can say is capable of treating multiple dimensional pathologies which are happening in the body this reference was quoted by my previous speaker dr binay sir and amruta rishtam is tested uh, and it has been found effective against many common pathogens which are affecting the body that is staphylococcus aureus and simon salmonella typhi isrecia coli e coli and all those now let us see some of the reported effects what has been shown that a water soluble extract of uh, 95% of ethanolic extract has shown significant antipyretic activity this is the effect seen by uh, from pinospora cordifolia aqueous and methanolic extract have inhibited intracellular multiplication of salmonella typhi which causes the enteric fever it is also effective in infected mice that has been evaluated by an animal study 
Yes. When when we come to the malaria, then we have seen the reports are there that Tinnospora cordifolia extracts have resulted in inhibition inhibition of Plasmodium bergei, which is one of the malaria causing pathogen. And several compounds have shown promising results against chikungunya, which had caused havoc some years before in India and other parts of the world. So what we can say that in each and every action that is required to treat a case of fever is present in guduchi and thereby that is present in amruta rishtam. It has got an antipyretic activity. It, is, it has got an antibacterial activity, anti-malarial activity, antiviral activity. And on the top of it, it has also capacity to treat the post fever sequelae. That's, a, that's why we can say that in any type of fever, in any severity of the fever, Amruta Rishtam can be on our prescription and it, it will definitely show good results in, in treating the cases of fever. A lot of patient comes to us for common complaints like anorexia or loss of appetite. And what Ayurveda thinks that in cases of anorexia, there are two pathologies that may be happening in the body. First is impaired digestive fire function. And second is impaired function of vata, precisely samana vayu that is responsible for igniting the agni. And impaired digestive function can further be due to non-secretion of pitta or collection of doshas at the place where the agni is working and they obstruct the function of agni and thereby a person suffers from anorexia. So in, in such a situation, how guduchi or amrutarishtam will be useful in cases of non-secretion of pitta, there are reports that guduchi increases the secretion of bile from the liver. So the action of pitta will enhance in case where there is less secretion of bile and thereby it is causing anorexia. Uh, guduchi is very good digestive for doshas. It, it metabolizes the ama doshas. So guduchi in case of collection of doshas will be helpful in digestion of doshas. Guduchi is very good in maintaining the direction of vata and maintaining the function of vata and thereby it can help in the function, improving the function of saman vayu, which in turn will help in igniting the digestive fire and make a person free from anorexia. There are also reports or uh, the actions of uh, Amrutarishtam we can see in cases of diabetes. We call it as Prameha in Ayurvedic languages, uh, in Ayurvedic language. And the main pathology that is happening in Prameha in our body is impaired Kleda. Kleda is nothing but the water, what we can say, uh, something that is having close resemblance with water and its functions in the body and how it, it is impaired the impairment of clay the causes the laxity of dhatus we call it as a dhatu shaitilya and it also impairs the function of basti that he is actually controlling the amount of clay the in the body in both these situations which are which we can say the hallmarks of the pathology of Prameha in, a, in our body, how Guduchi will help, how Amrita Arishtam will help. It will help to reduce or regulate the functions of clay in our, in our body. It, it will also reduce the collection of doshas which is taking place in causing the pathology of Prameha. And will also improve the function of uh, samanavayu, uh, apanavayu that is uh, going to, uh, that is actually helping or that is actually uh, controlling the function of basti. And in, while addressing to the laxity of dhatus, it is kashaya that is astringent and it is sangrahi. That means it has a tendency to collect the things together. And laxity of dhatus, whenever the components of dhatus will be collected together, they, be, they can become stout and the laxity of dhatus can be treated. So thereby, due to its kashairas and its sangrahi property of guduchi, it may help in improving the status of dhatus or reducing the laxity of dhatus. Shailesh Ji, we are coming to the close of our time permitted for us. Yeah, I'll, the, I'll try to make it as fast as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. There are some reported effects of Guduchi 
in in treatment of uh, diabetes it reduces the fasting blood sugar level and blood glutathion level it reduces the cholesterol which is second culprit in causing the pathology of diabetes it is also help it is also found effective in the complications of diabetes basically namely the diabetic neuropathy and gastropathy or diabetic foot it also increases the urine volume so whatever has been told in ayurvedic classics same evidences we can find when we evaluate such uh, this medicine from the modern tools of research now interesting that is effect on arthritis that is joint disorders ayurveda has categorized these joint disorders into three major diseases which are seen like amuvata which is rheumatoid arthritis vata rakta that is gouty arthritis and sandhikata vata that is degenerative arthritis and let us see how amrutarishtam can help in all the three situations in amuvata there is collection of unmetabolized dosha that is sama dosha in the joints due to the impaired function of the digestive fire in gouty arthritis there is vitiation of rakta and that obstructs the passage of vata at the places of joints and thereby there is uh, inflammation and swelling in the joints in in the degenerative arthritis there is weakness of tendons ligaments uh, that is sira and kandara which are actually upadhatu or which are formed by the blood and there is weakness of muscles and increased level of vata these both these conditions the amvata and vata rakta in chronic stage turn into degenerative arthritis this is very well known fact and what then amrutarishtam do it can improve the metabolism it can improve the function of all doshas and what has been told about amruta that is guruchi that it is shonita granthi bhedana it removes obstruction in the passage of blood and thereby improves the circulation this one particular reference about the action of guruchi helps us in solving or helps us in understanding its action in multiple diseases be it diabetes be it arthritis be it inflammation be it pain or be it fever it also will help in strengthening the asthis and thereby it can help in all the types of arthritis be it degenerative arthritis or be it inflammatory stage of any type of arthritis and there are reports that how guruchi is useful it has got remarkable anti inflammatory property it it decreases the intracellular ros in post chikungunya arthritis it improves the hb and rbc counts which usually fall down in inflammatory arthritis conditions due to the expression of hepcidin and it maintains the circulating iron so it is it will not just help in improving the status of the joints but it will also help in improving the status of hemoglobin and rbcs and in degenerative cases it slows down the loss of bone it reduces the serum osteo osteocalcin and it has got anti osteoporotic activity thereby it can cover all the spectrum of inflammatory arthritis as well as chronic degenerative arthritic changes skin diseases uh, these are basically caused due to all the three doshas when they are affecting the twacha that is skin rakta mausa and lasika guruchi is having wonderful effect on rakta dhatu it whenever all these four are affected and they in turn present in patient in the form of pustules or inflamed red uh, red lesions or blackish discoloration mainly due to vitiated pitta and rakta this amrutarishtam can come into play it will improve the metabolism of uh, rakta dhatu it will increase this the uh, it will improve the status of pitta and also it will after uh, due to its positive effect on rakta dhatu it will improve the skin color complexion and glow and thereby, thereby it can help in the skin diseases where pitta and rakta is predominantly vitiated and there are multiple references of its use in different type of skin conditions right from microbacterium leprae to psoriasis to skin cancer cases and uh, 
a lot of papers can also be found on internet about its good effects of tinospora cordifolia last is the effect on liver now, liver is a place where a lot of metabolic activities are taking place it is the chief place for raktavas rotas that conducts that is the origin of raktadhatu in the body and that conduct the function of purification of raktadhatu it also regulates the pitta now in such cases where the liver is impaired it can cause a lot of diseases like jaundice pandu that is anemia the gi disturbances it impairs the function of rakta and it collects actually the pitta causing the diseases of pitta whenever the liver is impaired now how does guduchi has an hepatoprotective effect let us see from ayurveda's point of view it is going to basically improve the digestion it is going to improve the by improving the digestion it will improve the quality of ahara rasa then it will re reduce the obstructions in the channels and thereby it will have good results it will show good results now this guduchi is basically stimulating the liver it is increasing the secretion of bile that is pitta it is improving the uh, the removal of waste products from the liver or from the body through the through, with the help of liver whenever the liver gets stimulated the stimulated river liver will improve the status of raktadhatu and when the raktadhatu is in good shape it will help in uh, improving the status of all other dhatus and all other srotas in the body and these are some reported effects of hepatoprotective activity in of tiospora cordifolia in paracetamol or ccl4 induced hepatotoxicities it has shown to reduce the ast alt ggt and bilirubin interestingly it has it is also evaluated in uh, cases of obstructive hepatitis and it has shown to improve the outcome it has reduced the mortality in cases of hepatic obstructive diseases this is a very wonderful paper by dr r d bapat who, who himself is an uh, is a gastroenterologist and surgeon uh, shailesh ji i am going to uh, ask you to um, draw it to a close because we would like a little time for discussions but stay with us because we will have a little time to go on now this is a very good place to stop our discussion today it's really safe thank you so yes. much for your wonderful presentation you have touched on many many details you have given us a little more than a taster I'm going to pass the floor to Harish Verma ji, and then we will come back perhaps to your uh, to the rest of your uh, presentation. There are many questions here from the floor. So, Harish ji, floor is back to you. Thank you. Namaskar, sir. It was excellent discussion, and uh, I'm so sorry we due, due to time constraint we can't listen more. But it was amazing. Both the speakers were very very good. and now uh, dr madan ji i would request you to bring uh, dr prathiba ji prathiba. on dais so that we Thank can uh, ask her prathiba ji namaskar you can see where we stopped off in shailesh um, shailesh ji's presentation is that conflict that harish ji started off with so on one hand we have traditional formulations that are prepared in a very very well understood way versus the press that is perhaps talking about the detrimental effects of tinospora silesh ji has very clearly shown us how the liver functions can be enhanced whereas there are reports of uh, complications with liver and particularly perhaps with conditions like um, autoimmune hepatitis etc these are areas where there is a bit of attention and i suspect a large part of this tension is because of the way in which the formulation that is used either used as a supplement or something of that kind where is where is this tension is there something there that we can use to tell people do not use formulations do not use single supplements or extracts etc they might lead to problems or do we have to say that there is a autoimmune condition which is uh, autoimmune hepatitis 
we don't know who might be suffering from this. Is it safe to use Tinospora cordifolia, either in as a, the way it is prepared traditionally? What is what is your take on all this? And you know, you are sitting in America where the tensions can be much more amplified in in in, in the way things are handled. Please tell us where where how we present this to the world at large. So um, um, just to clarify, I'm not talking about Prakshep Dravyas, I assume now. No, please do <laughs> use your time to tell us also about Prakshep Dravya. We, we had, okay. There are so many exciting things that have come out from both the speakers and it's, we are fortunate to have you also with us today. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. So just uh, one clarification before I share my thoughts. One is that I'm an NIA graduate, not Jamnagar. I would have loved to Apologies. graduate from Jamnagar, but uh, uh, NIA is where I'm alum of and Rashastra Bhaisa Jakalpana is my MD. Uh, I also have an MPH from BU after coming to US. So um, so regarding the Prakshepa Dravyas, I think I'll really try to shrink whatever I had to share. And I was requested not to have a PowerPoint, so there is no PowerPoint. So I want to just say, uh, just refresh to everyone that the twofold objective of Ayurveda is Swastasya Swasti Rakshanam, Aturasa Vikara Prashamnam Cha. So keeping this uh, objective in mind uh, of uh, not just uh, protecting and preserving the health of the healthy, but also alleviating the disease of the diseased. There is this uh, Chikitsa Chatushpada, which has been mentioned. Bhishak Dravyani Upasthata, Rogi Pada Chatushtayam. So Dravya, now if we focus on Dravya, which is the Aushad or medicine, this is the main intervention through which we try to get uh, therapeutic outcomes for our patients. Now, um, the medicines are, uh, um, as we have been talking about, there are a variety of formulations that are available in classical Ayurveda. There are five primary formulations, which are the Panchavidha Kashaya Kalpanas, like Swarasa, uh, fresh juices, Kalka, boluses, Kwatha, decoctions, Hima, cooled infusions, and Fanta warm infusions. And there are secondary formulations like Avaleha, Gruta, Taila, Asava, Arishta, Vati, etc. Uh, we are talking about one um, alcoholic uh, or fermented preparation, Arishta, today. So the main objectives of Bhaisheshi Kalpana, as I was saying, was to make uh, the formulations more effective, rich in potency, safer, synergistic, bio, more bioavailable, palatable, etc. Uh, we have to keep in mind when we are choosing the formulation, the Vyadi, Vyadi Marga, Vyadi Bala, Vyadi Jirnata, Rogi, the, the patient uh, age, Bala, Sara, Samanana, Dosha, Dusha, Samurchana, all of that, those technical terms, Kala, etc. Uh, now, many drugs or uh, not drugs, Dravyas or ingredients go into the polyherbal formulations. And then there is a category of dravyas, which we call prakshepa dravyas, which are um, dravyas or uh, ingredients, herbal ingredients that are added for certain uh, specific objectives. The word prakshepa itself is derived from prakshepa na, which means uh, throwing forward, casting, scattering, etc. The exact sutra is prakshepaha aushadha adishu kshepaniya dravyam. These dravyas are distinctive to each kalpana or formulation, although there are few dravyas which are used as general prakshepa dravyas, and these are madhu, honey, sita, sugar, guda, jaggery, trikatu, which is three uh, pungents, chaturjata, taila, grita, lavana, hingu, kshara, jiraka, shilajatu, basmas, etc. Prakshepa dravyas can be considered as additives in the modern uh, Western lingo, but they are much more than that. The main objectives of Prakshepa Dravyas is to make the formulation itself more effective, more potent, more synergistic, more bioavailable. The Yoga Bahi Dravyas are there, and more absorption, assimilation, palatability, and increased shelf life. These are some of the primary objectives. I'm rushing through. Sorry about that. 
capability of a form, particular formulation to remain within the physical, chemical, microbiological, therapeutic, and toxicological specification is termed as the stability of a product, and Prakshepa dravyas increase that as well. Prakshepa dravyas can be of plant origin, pipali, maricha, twak, patra, ela, etc., or animal origin, grita, madhu, etc., or mineral origin, loha basma, swarna basma, swarna makshika basma, etc. Um, now, I'm not going to go into uh, other details. I have much more to share about Prakshepa Dravyas. Now, I will um, directly dive into the question you asked, Madanji. So, um, there are many layers to the question you have asked. First of all, Mm, and I could be sounding very different from what uh, the kind be of response. Be as candid and be as frank as you can, because we like to get it from your heart. <laughs> if you want to be angry, you can be angry too. We permit that too. Um, actually, my response might be a little different from what you may have seen from the general Ayurvedic community. And that's just a reflection of who I am as a person, probably. That um, I like to I like to pay attention to all the feedback, all the types of feedbacks that are coming, because um, introspection is a very important part of um, the validity of the science. So um, first, let me comment on the study itself. The study is, uh, in my opinion, and I think Dr. Gangadharan has given a very good response to it. That the um, even though they are talking about a multi-centric trial in this particular report. It's a multi-centric trial. Uh, just to refresh to everyone, just give me one second. So it is a multi-centric trial. It is nationwide, 13 centers. And it was a retrospective trial um, of uh, several years. I, I can't see how many years yeah. they had gone. Dr. Sorry, Sivaji, you can share if you want. You can share okay. Okay. This is the this is the study itself. Um, you can see it's a multicentric trial. It's a nationwide study. Um, I, I am trying to highlight these uh, big, uh, you know, uh, you know, optics of the study that that really made it sound very significant and uh, spanning 13 centers in nine locations. Uh, and then at the end of it, uh, okay, from 2021, I think that was the duration. Now, um, now here I'm going to share a Hindi kahavat uh, or a saying, Khoda pahar nikli chuhiya means they are trying to blow it as a, like a major, major, uh, you know, finding so many uh, centers and ultimately how many patients are you reporting? 43. And there is no reasoning why you found only 43. If it was such a large study, where are the others? What was the reason for the exclusion of those? What was the formulation itself? Where was this formulation sourced from? Mm -hmm. huh? Those things are not mentioned. Now, this is extremely, should be extremely concerning. So we, on one hand, I'm all for introspection. On the other hand, I'm very, very um, sensitive to uh, inappropriate studies like this. We had one in 2004 by Dr. Robert Saper. Mm -hmm. And he made uh, our Rush Astra quite... Uh, infamous, especially in the United States, and it was a very motivated study. I'm not going to go into that one. That is also one of my very, you know, strong, passionate uh, rebuttals that I have given because uh, I'm a Rashastri, and I know what were some of the gaping holes in that study. Now, for this particular study, so these are some of my uh, points of major concern. And that makes it sound like a very motivated study because I have a feeling Ayush was making tremendous uh, forays into the mainstream healthcare in times of COVID. This seems to be a very motivated uh, publication to bring down that credibility of, of the Ayush uh, suggestions. Now, 
At the same time, I do want to end on the note of introspection that uh, all of the general recommendations that were being made, we can think about making it a little more uh, careful because Swastha says Swastha Rakshanam is the main goal, right? First goal. So we have to take care of that. We have to take care of Pran Raksha. And thirdly, uh, the best way to do a rebuttal is actually maybe select some autoimmune hepatitis cases and do a trial of uh, Guruji and show that it's completely uh, sure. safe. And that is the best way, in my opinion, instead of, uh, instead of just anecdotal or assuming, uh, let's take that as a challenge and let's conduct it as a group. Maybe we can do it as a designer study Wonderful. as a group. Prakhbaji, thank you so much. Thank you have touched on some, you have given us some practical tips. Now, what is important, what might be important here would be to revisit those two papers that you talk about. This is the recent one about Guruji, the earlier one, the SAPA paper. And I don't think proper rebuttals have been offered to both of these papers. So I know you are rushing off somewhere, but if you have time with us, please stay, because I would love to hear from Venkat Joshi, who is joining us from London. And I think if we come together, we are able to get the critical mass that we need and uh, and the kind of, we'll be able to put the arguments correctly to make our case clearer to people. You know, when you go into sections like Jwara Chikit's uh, Adhyaya of Charaka Samhita, it's a very, very detailed section with a very deep axiomatic logic that is there. And when we do preparations as uh, in Bhaisaji Kalpana, there is a reason why we select plants at a specific time of a specific maturity whether it is grown on a on neem tree, as in neem galoi, etc. There are many, many details of this. Let us hear from uh, Venkat, Dr. Venkat Joshi. Namaskarji. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar, Madanji and uh, Harish Varmaji and Pratibhaji, everyone. Um, uh, the thing is, uh, in my experience of um, uh, Guruji, when I was a uh, principal at Yale and Rao Memorial Ayurveda College, Kopa, from 97 onwards, there were uh, full-blown AIDS patients used to come for Manipal Academy of Higher Education. And, and one patient uh, out of, uh, you know, he couldn't get the foot, he was not affording the treatments. Uh, then uh, the self-referred uh, in his uh, clinical condition of AIDS syndrome. Uh, and then our director asked me, can you do something in this patient? And everybody was scared and then I didn't know what to do, but then, <laughs> Uh, then I started uh, in a trial and error method with so many things from our 250 plus uh, herbal garden in Kopa, Sringeri. And eventually I came out, as you mentioned, Madanji, with this um, uh, the Vamavartani, Dakshnavartani, based off for information about the Guruji twining over the neem tree. And that was my primary, you know, selectivity. And then I collected myself with the thickness of these Guruji stems, which have been grown the highest thickness. I, we brought and then chopped it up nicely in the pharmacy to prepare the Guruji Sattva and Dana uh, um, 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 and under my supervision. And I believe me, I only used the Guruji Sattva and Dana into the full blown AIDS patients. Are, uh, and then the pay, pay, and then the consultants from Shimoga started uh, referring so many AIDS patients. Now today, AIDS Research Center is there in the Ellen Rao Memorial Ayurveda Koppa College under Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences, Bangalore, uh, because of uh, this uh, significant improvement. Uh, it's like you know the pulse and the temperature. Its whole room is messed up with his vomitings and diarrhea, and nobody would enter into that room. I was there going, and then the, they were used to scold me. You know, he is putting us all in danger. All the sisters, he never did support me. So that is my experience. That Guruji Gana and Sattva, if you start using, why is it now with compare whether it is from Dabar or from Himalaya or any Guruji Sattva or Gana from different sources, compare them. Physically, you can see the pharmacological, forget about it, pharmaceutical and all the testings, but the physical organoleptic method of examination doesn't really meet to the standards of the same color and the texture consistency of those with the thank test. You. Venkaji, so why thank are you so we much. doing? Introspection, yes, as Dr. Pratibhaji said, that we have to introspect ourselves that, you know, we are not having that quality of the standards. Why? This is a very fortunate uh, event in that we have come together in such numbers with such expertise from BHU, 
from uh, 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 Shailesh Ji, perhaps Shailesh Ji trained in Pune at Tilak Ayurved Mahavidyalay. I, I, I don't know if Shailesh Ji, that's where. And we have Harish Ji here in Canada. We have uh, Pratibha Ji coming from, and all presenting a coherent story. Now, for an outsider, let us say university health networks that Harish Ji and Canada India Forum are involved with, for them, all this discussion will seem like an alien language. They will not be able to understand any of the things that we have talked about. The things that we have talked about are all based on deep logic and very deep principles. So there is a challenge for us. There is a big program being set up between All India Institute Ayurveda in New Delhi and the University Health Network here in, in Toronto with a resource that is fantastic in that there is a good scholarship and understanding that can come from India, a very impressive group of researchers here in Canada who can start addressing these questions, particularly in that one area that Pratibhaji correctly said, autoimmune hepatitis. I want to pass the floor, uh, Venkatji, to Harish ji, because he will be able to guide us a little more into some of these finer uh, details. I know that we are almost uh, 20 minutes over our prescribed time. I leave this responsibility with Harish ji. Harish ji, namaskar, to guide us into where we need to go further. Harishji, Namaskar. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar. Uh, first of all, I am thankful to all the uh, all the speakers. I am thankful to Dr. Benerji, Dr. Shalesji, Dr. Pratibhaji, and of course, Venkatji, Palviji, and we all are the organizers. So it was a fantastic uh, uh, presentation today by all the speakers. Now, I just want to add a few words about the about this uh, controversy, I respect modern hepatologists. I respect their observation. I don't want to just uh, uh, say that they, they are against us or they are wrong, but I think we should be cautious about the use of immunostimulant Ayurvedic herbs or the Ayurvedic formulations in cases of autoimmune diseases. I am working in the area of autoimmune diseases for the last 30 years, particularly in ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease. I have seen per personally some of the single herbs, if given, uh, which are immunostimulant, like Gaduchi is a very powerful immunostimulant, it may cause some uh, damage or it may can aggravate the disease. I agree to it, but we need to, as Dr. Pratibhaji said, we need the controlled clinical trials and we need the controlled uh, mechanism to find out exactly what is, how it happened. But there's no harm if we, if we put a caution on use of immunostimulant herbs or the immunostimulant formulations in autoimmune diseases because it can stimulate, because in autoimmune diseases, the treatment by modern medicine is immunosuppression and immunostimulation is the opposite treatment. So there's a possibility and if there is a observation like this and we need to respect it. And now, as we are running short of time, I invite uh, Dr. Palviji for a vote of thanks. Unmute. Please unmute, yes. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Dr. Harish Verma. And I would like to thank all the panelists and the dignitaries today who have spared their time. Our speakers, Dr. Benay Sen, Dr. Deshpande, Pratibhaji, Dr. Vivek, uh, who all have come, uh, Dr. Uh, Georgie Bhalla, all, uh, Dr. Naren, Mr. Narin, all of them. I would just like to uh, say three things about today's topic, Amrita Arishta. Uh, Guruji, along with its additional herbs, the it has a very strong antibacterial, antiviral activity. It helps the subdued metabolism in the diseases is elevated because of these combinations. And lastly, it Dorbalya, that is the weakness, is uh, improved by giving Amrita Arishta. With this, 
I thank Canada, uh, India Foundation for being a big support, uh, Consulate General of India in Canada, Canadian College of Ayurveda and Yoga, Canadian Ayurvedic Practitioners Association, Kappa, and the European Ayurveda Association, Association Ayurveda Academy, and Y Media and Pravasi Television. And last but not the least, Tathastu, Dr. Madanji, thank you very much. And all the audience today who have participated in this uh, seminar, uh, webinar, I thank everybody for your valuable time. Looking forward, next Sunday, we are going to discuss about uh, Ashwagandha Arishta. So be there for the brainstorming. Thank you all. Namaste. Good, good morning and good night. Thank you, uh, Pallaviji. Thank you so much. I think, Harishji, we are permitted a little bit of free time for uh, open discussions, I think, because um, we have one or two questions from the attendees. So the formal event is now closed. I think uh, we may be still going live, but I think uh, 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 Satishji gave us a few minutes. I want to take a question from Ushashi Ghosh. Ushashi, please unmute and come on and join us to uh, join us and talk to us directly. Tell us where you are from today, where are you joining from your question. We look forward to your question. Ushashi, you are with us? Uh, hello. Thank you. Hello. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for uh, keeping your hand uh, raised so long. Morning, and the floor uh, is yours. <laughs> Uh, actually, I'm, uh, I passed uh, BMS from uh, J.P. Royal State Ayurvedic College, Medical College, it's uh, West Bengal, and yes, yes. And next, I uh, uh, pursued my MD from Shamadash Bhattu Shastra in subject Gravidhuna. That's why I'm here. Uh, I, like, I like this conversation. Uh, the main thing in where are you of, Ushashi, where are you where are you today where are you joining okay, us from um, I, right now i am doing uh, assistant prof, uh, assistant professor in siddhakala with mahavidyalaya in uh, maharashtra so which city in maharashtra? maharashtra yes basically in maharashtra which city so, in maharashtra uh, sangamne thank you <laughs> the question okay. the floor is floor is yours uh, so uh, I think uh, in post uh, in COVID situation, I faced uh, some question from my patient. Uh, mm -hmm. Do I uh, took guduchi? You know, I think uh, guduchi needs to be in a rational use. You know, I uh, I observe these papers. There are uh, comments about uh, guduchi is uh, having uh, negative effects. So many, so many, so many uh, papers I uh, found. But I think uh, Guduchi needs to be a rational study. Uh, I, uh, what uh, What is your opinion? I know. Ushashi, I, I, I think we should take. We should give this. Uh, thank you, yeah. Ushashi, I think we get to your question. I think we should give this question to Shaileshji. Shaileshji, it we had to stop you through your talk, but I think this continues what you perhaps what you had in your presentation. Please, could you? address Ushashi's question about the safety. Uh, can, can I know the gist of the question? There so was the question is, at the time of COVID, uh, Gudushi was being prescribed and there are some dangers associated with it. In brief, could you tell us how, what your experience was in formulations, use of formulations at, for the COVID period? Uh, because it Sanipata Jwara is approximately what was uh, uh, being the nosology of um, uh, COVID seemed a little bit like Sanipata Jwara and this appeared in your, I think Ushashi's question is, what are the dangers? Oh. Yeah, so, uh, as far as the COVID-19 situation was considered, a uh, lot of Ayurvedic formulations everywhere because COVID-19 situation was like uh, new to every, every medical fraternity. And everyone tried to solve this mystery by their own ways. Ayurveda has actually tried to categorize, categorically say it as a Sannipata Jwara or any other type of Jwara or Shwasa. And uh, a lot of work or a lot of formulations or combinations were used. But, uh, there, there were no such safety issues related with use of Ayurvedic medicines, be it given as 
a single or alone ayurvedic medicines or be in combination with the uh, conventional allopathic management uh, we at our hospital have tried a lot of combinations of herbal and herbal mineral uh, ayurvedic formulations on patients who were taking oxygen therapy and also on patients who were on ventilator and the results were encouraging there were no safety issues in fact what we could see that when we are when we are using something like uh, some medicine like swasthya chintamani ras or bhratva chintamani ras or maharshi vilas ras which are basically the herbal mineral combinations the outcome of weaning the patients from ventilators was very very encouraging of course this the uh, we we couldn't Uh, do it in a proper clinical way uh, or a clinical trial like uh, form because uh, because the time period was was very very short but of course these form, form combinations or formulations are very very worth exploring its efficacy in in multiple ways okay. and uh, about uh, guruji i would like to uh, second dr harish sir's opinion that we should be cautious while using it in autoimmune condition because it is it is going to actually stimulate the activities of liver and in cases of autoimmunity it may be not good to use kuduji in such cases thank you shailesh ji thank you i hope this uh, i hope this uh, satisfies the question that was raised here ushashi there is a possibility that we could come together again on a much more elaborate discussion about all of this we are limited for time on the cif uh, canada india forum platform here uh, but perhaps there will be an opportunity get in touch with canada india foundation or with harish ji share your questions this is not only for shashi but everybody else please share your questions in response to this um, a presentation today on a very very important theme about uh, tinospora cordifolia and all the fine details and particularly want to thank the speakers here once again uh, i with those few words i'm going to transfer the floor back to harish ji harish ji floor is back to you a special thanks to all of you who are joining us online or uh, joining us directly on the zoom platform thank you very much for being with us these events as we progress are only tasters we uh, give ourselves a limited time we want to get more people to learn about the specifics and the details and the logic and the way the confidence with which both the practitioner and the academician can delve into understanding of the 75 common traditional ayurvedic formulations keep in mind that the indian texts hold thousands and thousands of such formulations the traditional knowledge digital library holds almost 300000 different formulations culled from ayurvedic texts from siddha texts from unani texts and hopefully the emphasis that is being placed in and being presented to the world from jamnagar with the world health organization's global traditional uh, uh, medicine center will bring all of what we are discussing to the global uh, audience so there is much more to come with us join us keep staying with us in our sessions to follow and we will learn much more about the traditional ayurvedic medicines and how safely they are produced how safely they can be used even in controversial areas that we have been discussing today harish ji thank you so much for bringing us all together i want to thank your thank entire you. team there in toronto for bringing us all of all of us together from different parts of the world special thanks to joshi ji who is joining us from london so much more to discuss here please keep joining us and learn with us learn with the canada india the canada ayurveda yoga college and with all the scholarship that we have from around the world namaskar ji namaskar sir thank you very much next week we'll uh, discuss about uh, ashwagandha restum on the same time and we'll bring more speakers to it thank you very much thank you thank you, thank you everybody thank you thank you, thank you.